Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, Dean, for having me here. Um, since the start of this campaign, I've actually travelled more than 3,000 miles across the UK, up and down the country, meeting members, small businesses, actually having a lot of fun, eating a lot of food. I've had uh, fish and chips in Peterhead, uh, a bowl tea in Birmingham, a cream tea in Devon. I'll try Cornwall next time, Sarah, with the uh, jam and cream reversed. Um, but most of all, as Liam alluded to, I have enjoyed talking to and debating with members of the public about the changes I want to make as Prime Minister. Now, as an entrepreneur, that's a new line for this morning, <laughs> I want to fire up our economy, cut corporation tax and scrap business rates for thousands of high street companies up and down the country. As a reformer, I want our next social mission to be to abolish illiteracy and ensure that every young person has the skills they need to get a well-paid job. And as the son of a naval officer, as Liam mentioned, I want us to walk tall in the world with a decisive increase in defence spending so that Britain continues to defend the values that we believe in. But before we make any of those changes, we have to do one thing above all else. We must leave the European Union. Uncertainty is bad for business, bad for politics, and bad for our country. As one of the oldest democracies in the world, we must show the world that in this country it is the people and not the politicians who are the boss. And as your Prime Minister, I will. But belief alone won't cut it. Rhetoric isn't enough. This is about hard graft, focus, and attention to detail, deal or no deal. That means every eventuality, every law or statutory instrument, every industry, every part of the UK. One slip and we lose our leverage, our security, and possibly even Brexit itself. So I will make us ready. Throughout the campaign, I've made it clear that my preference is for us to leave with a better deal. One that addresses the problems with the existing deal and specifically the backstop, ensures we have a fully independent trade policy and allows us to, to design our own immigration system. I know that with my experience of business and government, I'm the best placed candidate to get that better deal. But I also know that renegotiation will not be easy. But it won't be impossible either. And with the parliamentary arithmetic that we face, securing a deal that can pass through Parliament remains the quickest and safest way to deliver Brexit. But what if the European Union refuses to budge? We need a comprehensive no-deal plan. Because Brexit is about more than slogans, more than belief, more than positive thinking. You can't leave the European Union on a wing and a prayer. You need a plan. And today, I'm setting out my 10-point plan. Firstly, on day one of my premiership, I will order an immediate ramping up of no-deal preparations. All government departments will be expected to act on the basis that we are leaving without a deal on October the 31st. All August leave will be cancelled unless I have a signed letter from the relevant permanent secretary saying that all preparations in his or her department are on time and on track. Secondly, a no-deal cabinet task force with similar powers to COBRA will be set up and chaired by me. And it will have three objectives. Firstly, to follow up any areas where government preparations are insufficient. Secondly, to agree and publish financial support for industries affected by tariff changes. Thirdly, to, improve, to approve infrastructure changes, including those that may not be completed by the 31st of October, such as a dramatic expansion of container capacity 
changes which are nonetheless very important and need to be started immediately. Thirdly, a new political negotiating team will be convened with members of the ERG, the DUP, members of the One Nation Group and Welsh and Scottish Conservatives. It will be led by the Brexit Secretary and supported at an official level by Crawford Falconer. He will be joined by top experts from around the world, tasked with producing an alternative exit deal based on the alternative arrangements proposals that can both command a majority in the House of Commons and address seriously and forensically legitimate EU and Irish concerns about the Irish border and the integrity of the single market. This plan will be published by the end of August. In order to avoid a take-it-or-leave-it approach, which would be fatal to negotiations, I and the Brexit sec Secretary will engage with European leaders and the European Commission during July and August to do our very best to come to an agreed way forward. I'll also establish, fifthly, a National Logistics Committee led by the Department of Transport to produce a plan to keep goods flowing in and out of the UK in the event of no deal. This will include an assessment of any emergency powers required to ensure, to ensure ports and airports will work in a coordinated way nationally. Number six, the Treasury will start preparations on a no-deal Brexit budget to be delivered the first week Parliament is back in September. This will include my existing policies of cutting corporation tax to 12.5%, increasing the annual investment allowance to £5 million, and taking 90% of high street businesses out of rates, which I will introduce in any circumstance. Number seven, HMT will also produce a no-deal relief programme. This will include a £6 billion fund for the fishing and farming sectors who export to Europe to ease transition out of the European Union whilst honouring our international obligations. It will also consider what relief other industries will require. We will pursue the government's existing approach to tariffs, number eight, balancing the benefits of liberalisation for consumers with appropriate exceptions to safeguard vulnerable industries and protect the prosperity and well-being of communities across every part of the UK. Number nine, I'll provide the necessary finance to support the development of customs solutions which can help deliver our cast-iron guarantee that we will never put up a hard border on the island of Ireland. And number ten, following the vote for the new plan in the House of Commons, I will then allow three weeks for negotiations with the EU. As Prime Minister, I'll make a judgment on the 30th of September as to whether there is a realistic chance of a new deal being agreed that can pass through the House of Commons. If my judgment and the judgment of my cabinet is that there is a deal to be done, I will seek to conclude the negotiations and pass a new meaningful vote and any necessary legislation in the House of Commons before the end of October. If my judgment is that there is no deal to be done, I will immediately cease all discussions with the European Union and focus the whole country's mission on no-deal preparations. One thing I will not negotiate on is citizens' rights. So to put the millions of EU citizens who have made the UK their home, to put them all at ease, I can reconfirm to them that their rights in the UK will be protected, whatever the outcome. This 10-point plan gives us the best chance of getting a deal, but also ensures that we're prepared if we don't. If the Commission engages in good faith and negotiations are going well, then I don't believe we should ignore progress made and throw away that deal for the sake of an arbitrary deadline. With a deal done, billions more will be available to invest in the economic and social missions that I've set out, and we should welcome that. 
But I want to be crystal clear with members of the Conservative Party, with my parliamentary colleagues, and with the European Union. If there is no engagement on this deal, if it's apparent that the Commission is simply not interested in negotiating, if there's no willingness to tackle the shortcomings of the backstop, and if there is no immediate prospect of a deal that can get through Parliament, then there will be no kicking the can down the road, and we will intensify and finalise our preparations to leave without a deal. So from the start of my premiership, I will work on the basis that we are leaving on the 31st of October with or without a deal, unless the Commission changes its position. No deal is not my preferred destination, but if a withdrawal deal is simply not on the cards, then the only way to fulfil the democratic mandate of the referendum is to leave without a deal, which is what we'll do. Now, in any negotiation, you need leverage. And part of ours is showing that we have a plan to ensure we succeed as a country through a no-deal exit from the EU, and we're willing to use that plan if we can't get an acceptable deal. So I urge any colleagues thinking of blocking a no-deal Brexit to reflect that you may, in fact, be making it harder to get a negotiated exit by giving the EU misplaced confidence that we'll give ground and ultimately increasing the chance that we leave without a deal. But I also urge others to be clear with people about the facts. There is no implementation period without a deal. There is no recourse to GATT 24 without the agreement of the other side. You can't do a trade agreement with yourself. And the chances of no deal, far from being a million to one, are real, which is why we must prepare. The point about making no deal a credible threat is that you actually have to do those preparations, detailed plans to help industry with any strong adjustment pressure because of the new tariffs they'd face. Detailed plans to address the additional cost and hassle of bureaucracy and export processes, in particular for smaller businesses. Detailed plans for support for the fishing and farming communities to ensure these industries, which form such an important part of our national life, remain competitive. While we are committed to open trade, we will not be naive or careless of the legitimate defence of our industries, including those which have played such a vital role in our nation's story. So we'll develop support funds to provide direct assistance to those most in need. We spent just over a trillion pounds bailing out the banks after the financial crisis. So if we did it for the bankers, why wouldn't we do it for the fishermen and farmers as well. The plan I've set out today will either resolve the key issues or show how they're going to be resolved. It would include a plan to continue to work towards a zero tariff, zero quota trade agreement with the EU and find specific solutions to the challenges on the Irish border which respect the Belfast Agreement to which we are and remain absolutely committed. It would involve one of the largest fiscal and regulatory stimuli the country has seen in decades. It would mean other tax and spending commitments will have to wait. So if you're the sheep farmer I met in Shropshire, or the fisherman I talked to in Peterhead, or the factory manager I met in Kidderminster, my message is simple. I know you face uncertainty if we have to leave the EU without a deal. I hear you and I will mitigate the impact of no-deal Brexit on you, your families, and your businesses. You'll have to change your business model, but I'll guarantee you get the support you need to do so, and we'll ensure that no family, no community is left behind. In the end, I've always said that Britain will flourish regardless of the way we leave the EU. But we need to be realistic about the short-term impact of no deal, and I am prepared to step in and help smooth 
those difficulties. With, without the right Prime Minister and the right plan, Brexit is just a wing and a prayer. And we can do better than that. We need a Prime Minister for all weathers, one who will work tirelessly to get a deal, but also put in the hard yards preparing for no deal. A Prime Minister willing to walk away, but a Prime Minister who will give negotiations a chance and put in place a proper strategy to ensure they succeed, who will fight hard for the best Brexit deal, sure in the knowledge that our great country has always flourished best when trusting in the instincts of its great people. Thank you very much. Thank you.